the combination of Shaco and 531. And if you think you understand Shaco by looking through the numbered programs, I'll tell you right now, you don't. It's a little convoluted. There's a lot of sets. Let's go. What's going on? Garrett Blevins here again with another interesting program. In Suns 531, which it's called 531. It's sort of like 531. It's kind of touted as this mashup actually between Shaco style training and 531, which is just kind of weird. I'll be getting into that in a moment. Um, you're going to see some interesting protocols here. Maybe things, probably things you're not familiar with at all, unless you've looked at some of the Shaco numbered programs. Um, but before we get into that, it is sort of using this 531 style, but it's really just the third week of the 531. That's where you're gonna have these single plus sets with 95% of like 90% as your training max that you're gonna be doing and progressing off of that. Other than that, there's not this three week wave progression or anything like that. The deload schedule for this is kind of when you need it every four to six weeks. So it's a little bit different. But before I get into that, I do wanna talk about the combination of Shaco and 531. So if you need more info on 531, I've got a video on it. There's a million videos on it. You can look it up. But basically the idea is you're working up on each of the main lifts, squat, bench, deadlift, and overhead press during the week to a set of five as an AMRAP. So you're trying to see if you can hit five plus on week one, then three plus on week two, one plus on week three, which is why I say the week three protocol is here. Um, the work, the work up to those warm up sets is so sub maximal. It's almost not even worth considering. I cover that in the video on it, but the point of the program is it's very low volume. It's very high intensity, and you're going to be increasing your weights every, you know, four weeks after you deload after that third week if you need it. And you're gonna be chipping up those weights and you're gonna be doing these AMRAP sets and that's the main focus. Now there is some accessory work that drives that if you look at the variations of 531, but the main focus is a high intensity single set that you're just going hard on and that's how you're gonna drive progress. It's a very, what I would say, Western American feeling program. Now you contrast that with Shaco. Shaco is completely different. And if you think you understand Shaco by looking through the numbered programs, I'll tell you right now, you don't. I worked personally with Shaco, both as he brought the program for Kaizen, uh, that's run by Barkwan, Michael Farr, and Omar Isaf. Shaco made a program for them that was kind of his generalized template. He was a little hesitant to make it because it does bother him that there are these numbered programs out there that were just programs that he had written that are now taken as these templates that anyone can run. Uh, one of those was written, I think, for a lady like in her 40s, and it was a bench program, and the rest of it is kind of junk volume, and people use that like it's this great program that has all these secrets. No, these were things he wrote for specific people in specific situations. And when I worked with Shaco personally, when he coached me, I had to send him all my sets, all my videos. When he was seeing these submaximal sets, he was looking for maximal speed, crisp, technical proficiency. And as you accomplish the point where you could do an amount of volume with proper skill and speed at a percentage, say 70 or 75%, he would start to remove volume and slide you up the scale in a very artistic manner. Obviously it's not just artistry. He has scientific principles. He knew what he was doing, but his coaching style is very different than something you can like write on the back of a napkin like 531 is. That doesn't make 531 bad. That doesn't make Shaco bad. But when you just pull pieces from programs and mash them together, sometimes you can end up with a little bit of a monstrosity. It's like saying you can uh, you have an east-west fusion burger, but really you just went to In-N-Out and then you got some wasabi and you slathered it on the top. Could you do it? Yes. Should you do it? Maybe. I'm actually pretty hungry now. That doesn't sound absolutely terrible. Well, can, but won't. Should, maybe, but... Short, Michael, please. What part of short don't you understand? But it might not be a good idea. You might regret it later. So without further ado, I do want to say thank you to Evolve AI for sponsoring this. As a team, we got together and decided we want to review these programs. We want to talk about the principles behind them to spread some knowledge to people out there and help people better understand templates, but also better understand training. Evolve AI uses artificial intelligence to take the best scientifically validated training principles and provide those to you in an affordable manner that is going to be tailored to your specific needs and grow with you as you progress through your career. It's not just a template. There's not a one size fits all. It's an AI system that's going to tailor the training to you. So if you haven't looked into that, if you've stalled out on templates, if you don't know where to go, definitely check out Evolve AI. But back to InSun's program, InSun's 531. It's a little convoluted. There's a lot of sets. Let's go. 
day one, bench and overhead press. So you start out with the reps are gonna be here in black on the side, and then the percentages of your training max are gonna be over on the other. So set of eight uh, reps at 65%, six at 75, then three sets of four at 85%, then five at 80, six at 75, seven at 70, and then another AMRAP or an AMRAP rather down here with 65. So you've gone full circle, but you're gonna do a plus set here. You're gonna follow that up with accessory work with chest, arms, and back, by the way, uh, after you do the overhead press. Now the overhead press, six reps, 50%, five at 60, and then this really interesting three, five, seven, four, six, eight reps. So you're gonna be doing those with rest in between, but you're gonna do a triple, then a set of five, then a set of seven, so on and so forth, all with 70%. Now, all of this, both the kind of pyramid scheme, the repeated uh, sets, and this kind of wacko strange set combo at the same percentage range, are all Shaco pieces. That's the wasabi. That's pulling these little pieces from what are in the numbered Shaco programs and sprinkling them in here. Um, it does accomplish a lot of submaximal volume, but only at the beginning. And I'll get to that at the end. These percentages are static. You're always going to be basing this off your training max. And as you succeed, as we get over here on kind of the, the plus sets, the five, three, one aspect of the plus sets where you're increasing your training max, uh, every successful AMRAP on an exercise, all of this increases and that can be pretty dangerous. I'll get into that in a minute though. So that's day one, a lot of volume, obviously. Day two, we've got squat and sumo deadlift. This is not your competition movement. It's, an, it's meant as an accessory movement. So uh, very similar protocol over here is what you were doing. The overhead press, it's got the same you know, volume at this uh, single intensity. A little bit different though. Uh, this is the, the third week of the 531 protocol. So five with 75, three at 85, and then you've got your AMRAP with 95% then triples and some fives, followed up by another plus set back there at the end. This is gonna be a pretty brutal workout. That is a lot of sets, which again, has that Shaco feel of a lot of volume that is gonna be over submaximal intensities. Now, it doesn't look submaximal, but again, it starts at a training max, so it begins at a submaximal amount and it waves up and it waves down. Now, that's the pyramid uh, structure here, but it's still a lot. You follow that up with legs and abs for your accessory movements. Now. Day three, almost exactly the same. The only difference here is, um, you know, you're focusing on your overhead press and then incline bench and your incline bench uh, rep is slightly higher, but you know, whoop de doo who cares? Now, over here, I got really tired of writing out a million sets. So day four, it's the same thing you're doing on day two. It's the same protocol, except deadlift is your main exercise instead of squat. So you're gonna have that plus set that you had here with deadlift, and you are doing a lot of deadlift volume. Finally, a program that's not terrified of deadlifts where you actually use the competition movement instead of just doing like one set of deadlifts for the entire week. No, you're gonna do a heck of a lot more than one set of deadlifts on this program. FS is front squat. So um, you're gonna do that for the same protocol. Day five is the same as day three, which is bench and close grip. So those would go in here, follows the same thing. That's your bench plus set that you're gonna do on that day to increase your training max. Other than that, they are the same. Your abs are back and abs on day four, arms and other on day five, maybe like some network, neck work, something like that. Now, for the AMRAPs, when you're doing your, your one pluses um, for the squat, overhead press, deadlift, and bench, if you get zero to one more, um, so you're you know getting a single or a double, you're not gonna add any to your training max. If you get two to three more, you add five, three to five more, five to 10. I would say stick with the five with the upper body movements, maybe the 10 with the lower body movements. It's just easier to progress the lower body movements because they get stronger faster than the upper body ones, especially overhead press, but bench can get really sticky too. Um, so just that's, I would lean towards the lower end uh, on that. And if you get more than five reps, uh, you know, 10 to 15 to the training max, uh, that probably just means you're starting super low. Uh, most likely you're gonna stay in that upper range pretty soon. Here's the issue here, as I spoke about before, when you're adding this weight, you're adding it to all of the volume. It's not just the plus set that's chipping up each week. Everything in the program is rising with the tide of your training max. And this is a little problematic. It's like you're, you know, you're in and out burger with a little wasabi might be okay, but as you add more and more and more, it starts to really just become gross. And that's the problem with 
taking Shaco's high volume style and marrying it with a linear progression of intensity. It's the number one critique I have of this program because if you're escalating that, you're not doing what Shaco would do. You're not following his training principles. You're just taking the pieces of his program, some of the things like the pyramid sets or doing a lot of different reps at the same intensity range, and you're pushing them into a program, but that is increasing volume and increasing intensity it's not going to work out well long term. However, if you're at the beginning and you can tolerate this and you're surviving it, you're probably going to make some really good gains. I think that's why this program is so popular because my biggest critique of 531 is where's the volume at? And if you just say, oh, the volume's that five by 10 afterwards, well, that's terrible and boring. It's called boring, but big for a reason. This is not boring. This is exciting. This is novel. This is fun. This is interesting. But at the same time, it's not following the Shaco system. Uh, it's just a lot of volume with sub-maximal intensities that slowly become maximal intensities. And so the fatigue is really going to have an exponential increase in spike, which is going to need uh, necessitate deload. So if you can sense that, if you can feel within your body and know when you need to take a deload, you'll probably be okay on this program and you can do it. Um, there are a lot of other ways to do this, but it requires a coach. It requires some oversight to know when to pull out other things. Also the AMRAP, the like the double AMRAP workouts, just like, oh my gosh, I would never do that. But if you enjoy hurting yourself and are masochistic and terrible, hey, maybe this is for you. This is on Reddit, right? So, hey, um, let me get into the sets a little bit here to show you what I mean. So you've got main movements, which I'm calling the main barbell compound, squat bench, deadlift, overhead press. Then you've got assistance movements like the front squat, the sumo, the close grip, and the incline bench. And I have total sets down here. So 15 plus two, that means 17 total sets, two of which would be AMRAPs for squat. Same thing for deadlift. Finally, I do like this. I'm, I'm so happy to finally see some deadlift volume. I don't know that it needs to be exactly equal or done this way, but I am happy it's not this intense fear and aversion of uh, deadlifting anymore on this program. Um, for bench press, 23 with three AMRAPs, 23 with two AMRAPs on overhead press. This leads you to have more sets on your upper body movements, which is also the right call. You should have more lower body movements than upper body. I don't see any reason for that. I still, I cannot think of anybody who is like, oh, my bench is just so amazing. I, I just, I get so fatigued. I can't handle it because I'm so strong. No, everybody, the best benchers, they always do lo less lower body. It's just more taxing. It's bigger muscles. It's just the way it works. So I like the split here. I think the proportions are pretty good. And overall, I don't think it's a crazy amount of volume, given that most of it is submaximal, at least at the start. It's only when these sets are all rising up as your training max is increasing based on those AMRAP sets that this becomes problematic because really this volume does need to start to dip. If you're doing this many maximal sets just throughout your workouts, oh man, you're gonna start burning out pretty hard. That's so hot, it was horrible. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm so tired. Everything hurts. And that's the main issue with this program. It's just the progression to have this as a linear progression where it's one week, you're repeating it over and over again, and you're doing this much volume, it's probably gonna beat you up. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try it. There are lots of people out there. Please leave a comment below if it's you that have found success on this program. But if you are looking for something with a little bit more detail, that's a little bit more tailored, you're gonna have to find another program because this one just does not have the ability to manipulate and tweak it like you need to baked into the program. Now, if you just want to change it and do whatever you want to it, fine, but then it's no longer the program. In any case, that's my take on In Suns 531. Very interesting idea, very interesting mashup of Western and Eastern training philosophies pulling together high volume and high intensity, but at the same time, maybe pulling together some of the worst and the, the problems of those two worlds as well. So be careful if you're doing it. Um, in any case, if you've got to this point in the video, please take the one second it takes to like the video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please, that hurts me. Do me a favor, subscribe, you know, crying YouTuber over here. No, but it really does help out. If you like the content, you know, that always is great. Leave a comment below if you've tried the program. I'd love to hear about your experience and I hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.